Welcome to Second Union Baptist Church, where our mission is to promote spiritual growth, connect with the community, and to promote a deeper connection with God. Our vision is teaching, reaching, and loving. Our 2020 theme is consecration, conditioning, and commitment. Again, welcome. This is Second Union Baptist Church. We want to remind you all that we do have a prayer line that you can access every Tuesday and Thursday starting at 6.45 a.m. The number and code is on the screen. Using that same number and code, we invite you to our weekly Bible study, which is every Thursday on that prayer line at 7 p.m. We invite you to our parking lot service, which is every Sunday at 10 a.m. The address is on the screen, and we would love to see your face in the place on that day. We would like to remind you that our very own Lisa Clay Tyler is coming out with a book entitled Lily Amongst Thorns. You can buy that book at TraffordPublishing.com or Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble. We will be taking part in the service of Holy Communion on September 13th, 2020. That is the second Sunday in September. If you are on the lot, you don't have to worry about bringing your elements. We will provide those. But if you are at home, please gather juice or bread and be prepared to take Holy Communion on September 13th. If you plan on giving your offering today via online, again, our online giving is currently down and we do apologize, but it should be up and running on this coming week. So please make sure to check our Facebook pages as well as our church website to give online during this week. We appreciate your cooperation. If you plan on participating in Pastor Trent's drive-in celebration for his birthday, that is taking place after service today. So you still do have time to drive here and get in line to honor Pastor. And finally, we do have some thank yous. A thank you coming from Juan Anthony Jr. and Justin Anthony. They would like to thank the scholarship committee and the church for donating and investing in their futures. It was greatly appreciated. We also have another thank you from Miss LaQuinta Pace, and she would also like to thank the scholarship committee and the church for thinking of her and investing toward her education. Other than that, we do ask you to grab a pen, a pencil, and a piece of paper and get ready for praise and worship. Service will start momentarily. Pick it up, pack it up, and move wherever the Lord said move because that's where the grace of God was going. Amen. Yes. The grace of God was going, and so the tents had to pack up and move. Yes. And so I believe God is telling us, be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit yes. and move when the Holy Spirit says move so that you yes. can walk in your grace yes. and you can walk in your favor. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Awesome, God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your grace, and for your favor. God, we thank you for your very presence on this parking lot. Thank now, you, Holy Spirit, have your way. Please, Create in us a clean heart, oh God. Jesus. We lift this praise and this worship up to yes. you, Lord God. A worthy sacrifice, God. Yes. And we pray that it brings you a smile today, God. Yes. Because we love you, because yes. you're holy, because you're worthy yes. to yes. be praised. Yes. And we will give you this praise, God, yes. through sickness, through disease, yes. through infirmity, yes. Lord God, through hard times. You, we will lift up your name for you Hallelujah. are worthy to be praised. Yes. You are an awesome God, yes. and we love you, Lord. We love thank you, God, you, and we thank you. Have your thank way in you, this God. place, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Bless the pastor, bless the word, and bless the people who Have receive way, the God. word. May we never be the same, God. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' precious name we pray. Jesus, Amen. 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 Can we give God a praise with your horns this morning? Is God not an awesome God this morning? Hallelujah!
Hallelujah. I'm going to sing that again. I'm blessed. God knows I'm blessed. As I look all around me, I realize I'm blessed. Come on, ladies. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. God knows I'm blessed. As I look all around me.
This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for all of you. Let's bless our praise team again for blessing us. Amen. This morning, we thank God for all of you, all who are listening, all who are watching. We just thank God that we're able to come together on this another Lord's day. For God, he is great, and he is greatly to be praised. And we just thank God for all that he has done. Thank him for what he's doing and thank him for what he will do. Um, for all of you, again, the radio station is 87.7 FM, 87.7 FM on your radio dial. We just thank God for all of you who are here, everyone who plays a part in I'm just bringing things together on Sunday mornings. We thank God for you. Thank you so very much. We want to just say thank you to all of you who gave birthday wishes to me, gifts to me. Thank you so much. We love you in the Lord, and we just thank you for how you have blessed us this week. There's a word from the Lord, Psalm 121, Psalm 121, verse 4, 5, 6, and 7. Psalm 121, verse 4, 5, 6, and 7, it says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you, dear Lord, for your darling son, Jesus. We thank you for your love that is so amazing. We thank you for your grace as well as your mercy. We thank you for all who are watching and listening on this day, dear God. We pray now, dear Lord, that you would minister to our hearts and our minds. Father God, we ask that you would speak with our lips Hear with our ears, think with our mind. Have thine own way. Dear Lord, do whatever you see fit that needs to be done within us, dear Lord. Father God, that we may resemble you more and more. Have thine own way, and when we have completed this task, we will not fail to give you all of the honor, glory, and the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. For a few moments, the Lord and I would like to use as a subject or topic the security God provides. The security God provides. Security makes up a great part of our world. Our nation spends billions of dollars in an effort to maintain sufficient military and support to protect our country in time of need. Every city and local county in our nation, hire police officers who are put in place to serve and protect. 
As citizens, we ourselves take additional avenues to stay secure. Extra locks on our doors, security cameras around our homes, and even firearms in our homes. All in an effort to stay secure and protect what God has given us. But can I tell you today that true protection and security is not found in man or man-made things? Can I tell you today that true security and protection is only found in a God who is identified as the great I am, the everlasting Father, the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient one who was and is and will be? Being secure is more than cameras around your home. Being secure is greater than weapons throughout your home. Being secure is more than personal protection. Being secure is knowing who God is to you and knowing who you are to God. And building and establishing a relationship so deep with the Lord that you can say like the hymn writer, come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. This text here today, brothers and sisters, focuses on David as he explains the nature of the believer's security in God. The believers are urged to remember the source of their protection and security in God himself. For Israel, the mountains and hills of Palestine afforded them protection against enemies and a certain sense of security. The psalmist pointing to the hills was not implying that the assurance of every believer is in the literal mountains and hills around them, but in the power of the almighty God who provides the protective environment in which they are able to sleep secure each night. Because he starts off and says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord that has created heaven and earth. See, the God we serve protects us and keeps us continually. The first line of reference in heals themselves. But beyond that, it is God's hand moving through the hills that brings our greatest assurances. The hills are symbolic. They represent the way God provides help. They are not the help themselves. And so in this psalm, it presents God as the perpetual protector of the believer. Understand that the temple of Jerusalem was the dwelling place of God on earth. The glory cloud in the Holy of Holies, it signified the Lord's presence among his people. The city of Jerusalem situated on a mountain and, and surrounded by mountains. So when a Jew in other parts of Israel needed divine help, he looked toward the hills. To him, this was the same as looking to the Lord since the Creator's dwelling was in the Jerusalem hills. There was a poetic sense in which all help came from the hills. In the first two verses, the speaker is the psalmist expressing his complete reliance, complete reliance on the maker of heaven as well as earth. See, the first point here is that you have to understand about the security of God is that he keeps us and we are kept by him. Because beginning in verse number three, there's a change of the speaker in the remaining verses we hear the Holy Spirit guaranteeing the internal the eternal security of those who trust in the Lord. There is the guarantee of unquestionable stability. In other words, the believer's foot will be preserved from being moved. Since the foot speaks of the foundation or standing, it means that God will keep his trusting child from slipping or falling or failing. Understand that God is is the firm foundation for our lives. You can try to stand on anything else, but I assure you that one day it would fail and it will fall away. But if I dare you to stand on the firm foundation of the Lord God Almighty, that foundation that when storms come and winds blow, you're not blown away because you're standing on a sure and tried and true foundation, which is the Lord God. God Almighty himself. You have to realize that he is our security. The only way in which our foot not to be moved is for it to be standing upon the solid ground of God.
God himself. And when we are anchored in eternity, we can deal with reality. When we are united to the one who moves all things, we ourselves cannot be moved. See, there's a guarantee even here in verse number four, because we have to understand that he is that he shall never, neither slumber nor sleep. But think about it throughout the night hours when we are no longer conscious of the world around us. Uh, there is one greater than any in all security mechanisms in the world who watches over us with constant unworried care. I'm glad that God stays up all night long to the point where if I wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning, I can have a little talk with Jesus. If I wake up at 5 in the morning, I can have a little talk with Jesus because the God we serve and the God we deal with and have relationship with never sleeps nor slumber. There's some folk you need early in the morning, but ain't no use calling because you know they sound asleep. But can I tell you, if you're on the call on the Lord, God will not only hear your cry, but is there a witness that God even answers our cry? Not only does he keep us, but you have to realize that he protects us. <clears throat> we are protected by him. Because there is a guarantee that our keeper is none other than the Lord God himself. And he is personally, I like that, he's personally involved in the security of everyone who belongs to him. There's a guarantee that he will protect us from every evil influence. He says in the text here, he is your shade at your right hand. In other words, he stands by as a bodyguard to shield us from harm day and night. I like this because the verse says the Lord is your keeper. It's not that the Lord might be your keeper. The Lord can be your keeper. The Lord is your keeper. And that's a word for somebody to Day, somebody's asking you how you're making it, how are you maintaining through what you're dealing with? Didn't you know the Lord is my keeper? I can keep myself. I'm not wise enough to keep myself. I'm not strong enough to keep myself, but the Lord is my keeper. He casts his shadow over us. He hovers over us. He stands between us and the sun's deadly, deadly ultraviolet rays. As the psalmist promises, the sun shall not strike you by day. We're not only faced with the threat of the day, however, there's also danger at night. We can become moonstruck. God will also be our guardian. Then, he says, the moon shall not strike you by night. In other words, no evil will befall us when we are shadowed by God. Some may ask the question, does this, does this mean that there is no adversity that can come to the child of God? Does this mean that we should enjoy perfect health and wealth if we are to take these verses out of their context? We might reach that conclusion. But the fact is, however, that the psalmist has already seen his need for help in verse 1. He says, I lift mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. It is the Lord who made heaven and earth which my help comes from. He knows difficulty and in it he cries out for God to intervene. Understand, God does not promise that we will never have problems. You might as well suck it up and stop complaining. But he does promise us that he will never, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. In other words, he does not promise that we will never have problems, but he does promise to be with us in our problems and assures us that nothing can touch our souls and separate us from his love. Stop throwing your pity party. Stop crying. You're going to have problems. You're going to have troubles. But the good thing is you got an almighty, awesome God right there in the midst of the problem with you. And since God guards us, we know that our eternal destiny is held securely in his hand. 
In other words, watch this, all must pass before him before it comes to us. When he allows it to come to us, understand it is for our ultimate good. Stop asking, why is this happening? Why am I going through that? Why am I dealing with that? Some way or another, all things work together for the good. For those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. There is a reason that I am where I am. And there is a purpose for what we deal with. Thirdly and finally, and I'm done today. The third thing is he preserves us. The security of God, the security that God's, God provides, he first of all, he keeps us, he protects us, but then he preserves us. We are preserved by him. There's a guarantee in verse 7 and 8 of deliverance from all evil. It is a solid fact that nothing can come into the life of a believer apart from God's permissive will. There are no random circumstances no purposeless accidents, no fatalistic tragedies. No, he is not the author of sickness, suffering, or death. He overrules and harnesses them for the accomplishment of his purposes. In the meantime, we know that God is working all things for good to those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And finally, there's the guarantee. God his watch care over all of our movements in time and throughout all eternity. In other words, he will keep our going out in our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Understand, no sin, no attack from the devil, no evil can take us away from him. His love is constant. His presence is unfailing. He guards us to eternity. He keeps us as we go out and as we come in. In other words, every departure of your life, every arrival of your life, and the danger of change is monitored by the Lord God Almighty. How long would this be? Well, the psalmist, he answered it. He says, from this time forth and even forevermore. You don't have to worry about God slacking up on the job. You don't have to worry about God getting upset and quitting. You don't have to worry about God not showing up. The psalmist says the security of God is from this time forth even forevermore. Starting today, yesterday, and to and throughout all eternity, this is the help we need. And this is the help we get. Understand this. No one is as secure as the person who has received the Lord as their personal Savior. And therefore the songwriter, he asks, why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? For Jesus is my portion. I like this. A constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow. <laughs> I know. I know. He watches over me. You don't, you don't have to face the future alone you don't have to face today alone if you don't know him as your personal savior why don't you accept him acknowledge that he was born of a virgin acknowledge that he suffered that he bled that he died for the sins of the world acknowledge that they placed him in the tomb but he got up out of the grave he now sits on the right hand of the father are you being kept by him today? Are you being protected by him today? Are you being preserved by him today? The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. 
We're mindful that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but that's why I gave and sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Are you sure about your everlasting life today? If death invades your life, are you able to say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? You can give your life to him right there wherever you are. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your people. It is our prayer that you have ministered to every heart, every mind, dear God. Lord, we pray now, Father God, that we leave stronger, wiser, and better. Father God, thank you for being our security. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you, Father God. Bless the offering today. Father God, we ask that you would bless those who gave. Bless those who couldn't give like they wanted to. And Father God, bless them even more abundantly that they may give even more the next time. Father God, we thank you for how you provide for us. We thank you, dear God, for how you protect us and keep us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. <laughs>